graceful classical symphonies, lively klezmer folk tunes, soulful cantorial chants, rich melodies and vibrant rhythms fill this home and the ears and soul of the littlest Perlman, transforming baby Itzak too. When Itzak listened to music, a vivid rainbow of colors appeared in his mind. Hues from dark green to red to yellow, music brought Itzak intense joy and tears. Itzak loved it. By three, Itzak knew he wanted more. He had to make music. Young Itzak had already chosen the instrument whose magical sound he loved best. He begged his parents for a violin, but for an immigrant family whose dinner was often a piece of watermelon and some bread, musical instruments were a luxury. Still, Itzak pestered and pleaded. Finally, his parents brought him a toy violin. At first, little Itzak laughed with delight but he quickly recognized that his violin didn't sound like those the master violinist played. His music wasn't as clear as Yasha Heifetz, as intense as Isaac Stern's, or as enchanting as Ida Handel's. Disappointed, Itzak gave it a whack and threw it under the bed. Then the unthinkable happened. Polio swept through Israel. Four-year-old Itzak became infected with this deadly disease. He lay hospitalized, fighting for his life. After a few weeks, the doctor announced that Itzak was going to live, but Itzak's body was weak. He couldn't move his arms or legs. At least he could go home. There were so many tasks to relearn. Raising his arms over his head, holding a book, grasping a pencil. The work was hard, slow, painful. Other four-year-olds might have given up. They might have said no. They might have stopped trying. But a steady melody played inside its sack, encouraging, energizing, empowering him. A year of stretching, straightening, and strengthening paid off. Itzak could move his hands and arms again, but his legs remained paralyzed. Itzak would always need crutches or braces to walk. Crutches or not, Itzak didn't just sit in his room. His family moved to the suburbs, enabling Itzak to get to school on his own. They chose an apartment without stairs, so Itzak could move around easily. Crutches even helped his soccer game. To Itzak, these adjustments were no big deal. When you're four years old, you get used to things very, very quickly. Running around the block, riding a bicycle, jumping off a diving board, all these ordinary things Itzak would never be able to do, but Itzak made an extraordinary choice. He didn't become sad or angry. He knew the melody inside him gave, him gave him a different gift. Music got in his ears, gave him goosebumps, sent a chill through his body. Recognizing his passion, Itzak's parents bought him a new violin. Crutches meant Itzak couldn't stand like most violinists, but Itzak declared, I don't have to play it standing up, I can play it sitting down. A bigger challenge was his big fingers, fitting them in the small, into the small spaces between the strings. Still, he figured out where to place them. Itzak began studying the violin with a strict and old fashioned teacher. Do what I tell you, don't ask any questions, she said. Itzak had to practice for two or three hours every day. Making music filled Itzak with joy, but practicing didn't. So Itzak found some unusual ways to manage. Sometimes he would sneak outside, watching construction trucks pour concrete. Other times, he boing, boing, boinged his bow on the strings, only pretending to play. If his parents asked why the room was so quiet, Itzak explained that he was perfecting a new method. 
practicing inside his head. Yet young Itzak developed exceptional skills, including his brilliantly bouncy spiccato, vivid varied vibrato, speedy staccato strokes, playful pizzicato plucking, smooth, slow legato. Itzak's secret? He talked to the music, imagining the personality of the piece, what it looked like, what it felt, what it meant. His way of living, breathing, becoming the melody transformed his music into something extraordinary. At six, Itzak was performing with orchestras in Israel. At the age of 10, he was giving solo performances. Itzak's warmth, joy, and enthusiasm became well known. Some people doubted that a violinist could play while sitting down. Itzak knew he could. Later, he explained, I can't walk very well, but I'm not on stage to do walking. I'm on the stage to play. Obstacles were ordinary things Itzak just had to get used to, but the irresistible melodies vibrating inside his mind propelled and fortified him, and so he refused to give up. At 11, he wrote to the National Symphonic Orchestra, the Israeli Philharmonic, I hereby request that you give me an audition to play. I have the following pieces ready. Please answer as soon as possible. Sincerely, Itzak Perlman. Itzak waited and waited, but the Philharmonic never responded. Then came an extraordinary opportunity. The world famous variety television show host, Ed Sullivan, whose show was watched by millions of families each week, traveled to Israel. Mr. Sullivan was looking for new acts, so Itzak auditioned. Itzak later admitted that he played pretty well for Mr. Sullivan. Mr. Sullivan agreed. He invited Itzak to come to the United States and perform on his show. Knowing just four words of English, mother, father, and good morning, 13-year-old Itzak boarded a plane with his mother for New York City. On November 2nd, 1958, it sat set on the stage at the Ed Sullivan Theater, smiled his broad smile, propped his violin under his chin, and began to play. Watching the young round-faced boy, the audience became mesmerized. Within days, bags full of letters poured into the show, begging for Itzak to perform again. His life would never again be ordinary. And that's the end of Itzak, a boy who loved the violin. Thank you so much for sharing that story with us. It was so interesting to see all of the challenges he faced and, you know, always persevered though. Um, so as I mentioned at the beginning, um, following our musical interlude, Abigail would be happy to answer some questions. So get your brains thinking about some good questions. And if you see at the bottom, there is a both a Q&A and a chat function. Either one of those can be a way to submit questions. Um, and in the meantime, would love to pass the event over to Lauren, who has some music prepared for all of us. Hello. This was so wonderful to hear Abigail read this story. And I learned more about it's off than I, um, I, than I had known before. And I've always been a fan of him. I've been a fan of It's Ox since I was a little girl. Um, and so it was really great to hear more stories about him and see those beautiful illustrations. Um, I was telling Abigail earlier that um, I got to see It's Ox perform when I was a little girl. And I thought that maybe I would play some of the music that I got to hear him play. Um, so I, um, one of my favorite composers is Johann Sebastian Bach. And so I figured I would play um, something that Bach wrote for solo violin. 
first and I'll play just a little bit of it to give you a taste of it. Um, but I also wanted to, I loved hearing in the story all the different styles of Boeings that um, Etoc was wor working on and I thought maybe I could demonstrate some of those as well. So um, this is a, a Bach partita in D minor. Bach D minor um, solo prior Tita. And I was thinking while I was playing about how um, when I saw um, Itzhak perform, the, the size of his fingers are truly outstanding. They are some of the largest hands, largest fingers I have seen. And when you play the violin, you have to play on the very bony, bony tip part of your fingers. And um, I always remember thinking that when, when I was having a hard time getting something in tune, if Isaac can play it, then I don't have any excuses <laughs> because my fingers are not as big as his and I can figure out those notes. But one of the pieces that I heard him play um, when I was younger, I actually, that piece I learned when I was probably about 15 or 16. And so that um, music, something that I love about these pieces is that they travel with you and you grow with them and they're just kind of, friends and family members like your instrument is. And so that piece has given me a lot of comfort throughout all of the years of, um, of playing that. And this next piece is a Mozart concerto. And this is something that I heard Ita play when I was about the age um, that I mentioned. I was a teenager when I was playing this. So this is one of Mozart's concertos, a piece of it. And this is the G major concerto. <laughs> spiccato in the story. This would be an example of spiccato. That, that bouncy kind of like ricochet. hearing you read Abigail was pizzicato and pizzicato is when you're plucking the notes instead um one of my students Grant just learned one of these pieces I think that's he and he's watching so I mentioned a bit that's a left hand pizzicato but then a right hand pizzicato would be instead of playing with your bow that kind of thing um so okay I wanted to play one more tune for you so that was a lot. Of, those are two different classical pieces of music that um, most violinists learn those two pieces. It's kind of like um, the 
almost like the ABCs of violin. There are certain things that everybody plays. And um, if, if you're wanting to become a professional violinist. And so that's why I wanted to give you a little snippet of those because those are things that I know that Itzhak has played. And then I actually really, I love playing that music and I grew up playing that music. And um, another thing that I really like to do is fiddle. And fiddle is more of a dance tradition than a performance tradition, but I thought that I would play a waltz for you, written by one of my favorite American composers and his name's John Hartford. And this waltz is called, How Can We Love? Actually, um, let me see something. Oh, I have a little recording on my piano that I can play along with it. Give me just a sec and then you can hear the chords at the same time. musicians it was really really lovely to be a part of this thank you so much for joining us that was amazing and it's always great to hear about something but then actually hearing something is totally different so it really really helped tie everything together thank you so much of course well thank you to print bookstore mm -hmm. for this kind of thing on and abigail for making such great art and i'm just looking forward to hearing what some of the questions are for you abigail i'm curious to see what they are so i'll i'll go back to mute is that okay is yeah that okay? yeah all right thank you all so very much all right so the first question abigail since you're illustrating a book about a musician, were you listening to music he played while you were drawing? I did. I actually checked out some of his recordings from the library and I would listen to those when I was first doing the sketches and I'd watch YouTube videos of him also to see like little mannerisms and things he would do when he played. So definitely a lot of it's that music listened to. Um, and then another question, what are your favorite things to use when you're making art? Mm, for materials, I love watercolor because it's kind of unpredictable um, and it can give you some really fun results um, and spontaneous. And I think that's why I like it. So I use that, I use gouache, which is a little bit thicker than watercolor and it gives you some texture. Uh, I use colored pencils and sometimes I use ink too. And do you use all of those things at the same time? Like you overlap the different materials? I do. So I'll have, um, I've got a little trolley with the pencils and I've got the paint on the desk and it's kind of, um, it's sort of an organized chaos. So I'm just kind of pulling from things as I get going. And it's like, you know, if you're cooking and you think that needs a little more salt and you put it in. So it's like, if I get going, I'm like, oh, that needs more of this color and I'll grab a pencil and do things. Um, and do you have a favorite type of thing to draw? Do you have a favorite subject? Do you like people or animals or nature? Um, I think nature, definitely okay. nature. Um, 
probably if I did anything for work other than illustrating, I'd love to like be a botanist or something. So yeah, love growing nature, love being outside. Definitely. Yep. Your background stands with those statements. I see a lot of a lot of green things and a lot of botany illustrations behind you. So that makes sense. <laughs> Anything in the natural world I love. <laughs> um, and then one other question that we have here is um, what would you say to someone who is interested in illustrating books? How would they get started? Let's see, uh, draw all the time. Um, I wish I had it in here. I have actually one of my sketchbooks from when I was in second grade and just, I was drawing all the time then and just keep doing it. And um, stories that you love, try coming up with your own pictures for them. Um, how would you draw the people in the books? How would you draw the scenes? So um, read lots, draw lots and look at other people's books to see what they do. Um, I was a huge Tasha Tudor fan when I was growing up. So I used to check out all her books and Chris Van Allsburg and all of those people. So it's almost like um, you learn from them when you look at other people's books. So I do that too. I really like that suggestion too of if, even if the book already has illustrations, like how would you do that illustration or would you have focused on something else in the picture? Because, you know, your, your personality really comes through that way. And especially with picture books, illustrators are doing half the work. They're telling half the story. <laughs> um, all right. So unless anyone had any other questions, um, I think that's wrapping things up tonight. Um, thank you again to both Abigail and Lauren for being a part of this for our first bedtime story time. It's definitely a format that I'd love to continue. Um, and thank you, of course, to our audience members, both here and on Facebook Live for tuning in. Um, we really appreciate it. And as always, um, uh, Itzhak, as well as other books that Abigail has illustrated are available at a print bookstore. Um, so please think about adding them to your own library and learning even more about this amazing musician. Um, but thank you all so much for being here. And I hope everyone has a Great evening and some sweet dreams. Bye. Bye.